Uh, again, I'd like to thank the program committee for the privilege of the podium, uh, this time with the opportunity to present our work on intraosseous administration of transoxamic acid. Again, we have nothing to disclose. This work was also funded by the United States Air Force 701 Human Performance Wing. So the clinical entity that is trauma-induced coagulopathy is thought to be caused by a combination of acidosis, hypothermia, and dilution. But what we found is that there's a subset of patients that present acutely with an established coagulopathy, which has been termed the acute traumatic coagulopathy. And it's thought to be caused by an exaggerated expression of protein C, fibrinolysis, inflammation, and platelet dysfunction. The reason that we focus and care about the acute traumatic coagulopathy is that patients with this have an increased uh, transfusion requirement, they have more ICU days, more days on the ventilator, more instance of multi-organ system dysfunction, they have a three to four times increase in mortality, and they're eight times more likely to die within the first 24 hours. Now, transexamic acid is a synthetic lysine analog that's been shown to reverse hyperfibrinolysis, and that when given early, can potentially decrease mortality from bleeding. Um, Typically, it's given as a one-gram dose over 10 minutes, followed by a one-gram infusion over an additional eight hours. Now, in the setting of trauma, there are some challenges to IV access. Take your civilian trauma patient who has multiple injuries and put them in a car accident. Now, make this your scene. Make it at night and potentially take away one of their arms because it's a blast injury and the patient has multiple amputations. In contrast to inter intravenous access, intraosseous access has been shown to be easy to obtain in hypotension and sh hypotension and shock, can be used in the setting of multiple amputation, and uh, is reliable in the pre-hospital setting to establish access. And currently, there's no data comparing IV versus IO equivalency of TXA. Further, the DOD in 2013 stated that routes of administration of transexamic acid are a research priority. So to that end, we hypothesized that the intraosseous administration of TXA would reverse hyperfibrinolysis as well as intravenous use, and that it would also reach similar serum concentrations as intravenous. Uh, again, we ran six, this time we ran 16 animals through our hemorrhage and ischemia reperfusion model, where they all underwent the PrEP phase. We created our 35% controlled blood volume hemorrhage, the induction of ischemia via a 45-minute supraceliac aortic cross clamp, the reperfusion over five minutes, and then we entered a four-hour drug delivery and monitoring phase. In the drug delivery phase, we augmented fibrinolysis by delivering a, a 100 milligram bolus of TPA 30 minutes after the removal of the cross clamp, and we confirmed hyperfibrinolysis with Rotem. Five minutes after this, we administered our one gram dose of TXA randomized to either an internal jugular infusion or a proximal tibial IO. And you can see this is a, a representative uh, Rotem uh, demonstrating fibrinolysis. So in the monitoring phase, we monitored uh, standard lab values. A Rotem was performed at baseline 35 minutes after the cross clamp was removed or five minutes after the TPA was given, and then one hour after cross clamp removal. Uh, and then we serially measured serum TXA levels out to four hours. At the time of randomization to IV or IO infusion, all animals demonstrated shock as evidenced by hypotension and acidosis, and there was no difference between the groups. Here we have representative images of the uh, hyperfibrinolysis that was established in both uh, the intravenous and intraosseous groups, and there's no difference between these two. In the XTEM pa pathway, uh, what we found is we established our hyperfibrinolysis, gave the TXA, and saw that the lysis index at 30 minutes was reversed. Now, there, there is a, a slight difference in the, uh, the MCF on these. However, it's not statistically significant. Similar results were seen in the, in the NTEM, where we established our hyperfibrinolysis, gave our TXA, and saw the correction of the lysis index. So currently, there's no commercially available assay to test serum TXA levels. So in conjunction with the University of Washington, a high-performance liquid chromatography assay was developed that allowed for serial labs to be drawn. And what we see here is that there's no difference at all between the intraosseous and intravenous uh, levels of TXA. The peak uh, serum concentration occurred at the end of the infusion or 10 minutes after the start of delivery. And it was slightly higher in the IV, however, not statistically significant. But this is also, we're also comparing a central line administered dose of TXA compared to a peripheral IO. Um, 
and then out to four hours, there was no difference at any of our measured time points between the, uh, between the concentrations. Again, so this is a non-survival study. We don't know if it truly, if this would truly help, you know, mortality, but it does seem to correct the fibrinolysis. We weren't blinded as to which route we were administering the drug. Uh, and then we also didn't perform tissue analysis on the bone marrow to see if there's any deleterious effects of the infusion. Uh, and then we only assessed this via ROTAM. We didn't actually perform a functional bleeding model. So in summary, in an acidotic hypotensive swine, intraosseous infusion of TXA leads to similar serum concentrations. Uh, there's a slightly lower peak concentration, but it's not statistically significant. And again, we're pairing a per comparing a peripheral IO to a central IV infusion, and there was identical pharmacokinetics out to four hours. Uh, so in summary, again, uh, intraosseous infusion also reverses hyperfibrinolysis as well as intravenous infusion. And this potentially has immediate battlefield relevance, particularly to special operations forces that act medics who carry TXA with them. Uh, and this gives them another route to administer that drug and potentially give it sooner after injury. There is some civilian application as well. IV access is still challenging, but particularly in pediatric trauma in which an intraosseous line is maybe your only access. Uh, in Eckert et al. in a Journal of Trauma in 2014 and actually demonstrated that administration of TXA in pediatric patients improved mortality in spite of an increased injury severity score. Um, so this is just another route to potentially give that to those kids. So in conclusion, IO, IO TXA can be used in place of intravenous, particularly in a TCCC environment where obtaining IV access can be difficult. And in bleeding hypotensive patients, we expect that it to perform similarly to an IV administration. Uh, additional areas, areas for study, so alternate IO sites would be one. We only looked uh, at a tibial IO. We didn't compare the sternal or a humeral IO. A functional bleeding model, and then, again, tissue analysis on the bone marrow after administration. Thank you. One quick question on your methods. Did you put the, the your IO infusion under pressure, or is it just gravity hung? No, it was, it was pressurized. Okay. Yep, we did pressure. It was hung with a pressure bag. I have two questions. So um, you're, since there's no commercially available assay for testing serum concentrations right. of the uh, uh, TXA, how did you validate this to know that this was a, a truly good way to collect that data so that you have a valid comparison. Yeah, we, that was, that was something that unfortunately, I, you know, I'm not well versed in pharmacokinetics, but that's why we got involved with the, the University of Washington and they performed multiple tests and samples to validate the model. And that's, unfortunately, that's all I can tell you on that. Okay, it might be worthwhile in, in, as part of your, your um, manuscript to at least give a short paragraph on how that was validated so that, you know, people can understand a little sure. bit of the science. Yeah, I think that's a great point, sir. Secondly, um, do we know what the effects of uh, infiltration of TXA do to soft tissues? Because while, while you put it in through a central access, through a uh, 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 right IJ, is reasonably safe because you're not usually worried about extravasation. In an IO line or even a peripheral IV, that becomes a big concern. Do we know what the soft tissue effects are? Sure. No, and I, I think, you know, I personally don't. I know we we don't know what it looks like on the bone marrow, um, which is, in retrospect, something I wish we would have looked at histology to see what the effects of the drug are. Um, you know, TXA, we typically don't have central access immediately in trauma patients that right. get it, and it's given peripherally. Um, I'm not aware of any significant deleterious effects, but um, I would have to go and actually you know, search for that if that were the case. And I think that histology question, both from the bone and the soft tissue, may be important for just that reason. Sure. What's What's the next step with this research? Like, at what point am I going to be able to do this while deployed? I I would tell you now. Um, Dr. Martin is making a push to have the CPGs changed. Apparently, is even is what he's telling. Even me. sternal. I mean, anywhere. Yeah, that's again. We haven't evaluated the other the other sites. Presumably, it would behave, or it would, the, the drug would behave similarly. You would think, you know, kind of the next hypothesis, it's hard to test the sternal in pigs because their sternum is, is so thin that if you put the IO in, there's a real chance you, you put it in their heart. Um, our hypothesis is that the sternal, the more proximal the IO is, 
the higher the peak concentration will actually be, more similar to the uh, central infusion of the uh, uh, intravenous central line infusion of TXA, um, but we don't know for sure. Your flow rates are faster with your sternum and your humor, humerus than your tibial, so that probably makes some sense. All right, thank you Great. so much. Thank you.